Hello, everyone. Welcome to Traff Clan's webinar with Think Strawberries. Today, we'll be having Mr. Faras Mandwani, the general manager at Think Strawberries, representing Jordan Buddhism. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, I would like to start off by an apology for the last webinar, which we were not able to conduct due to some internet connectivity issues uh, with uh, Mr. Raghav. Uh, but I'm sure definitely that uh, we'll be rescheduling that webinar soon in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining. For more information about the events, I'll be sharing you uh, uh, an events forum link in the chat box given below. And you can uh, check out our uh, all the upcoming events in the month of April as well as the first week of May. Uh, Traff Clan brings to you the best and the most genuine information during this period of lockdown to ensure that you utilize this time to the fullest to be able to learn and hone your skills and learn about new destinations and grow together as a travel industry. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I just had a word uh, with Mr. Uh, Paras and he'll be joining us in just another two minutes and then we'll be starting off with the session. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, please start posting all your questions into the comment box and we'll take each and every question during the session. Thank you. Okay, if someone is uh, facing any problems uh, during the session uh, regarding the video quality, the audio quality, please uh, send in your requests uh, into the chat box and we look after that. And we have Mr. Paras Mandwani with us. Uh, Mr. Paras, are you able to hear me? Hello. I am not on the screen. Okay, so we have Mr. Paras. I think he's adjusting his mic and we'll be starting off uh, with the session very soon. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, due to the recent uh, update about the Zoom app, we have also started an entirely uh, native platform on the Trap Clan website. As, as well as you can watch all these repeat telecasts on the Trap Clan's YouTube channel, the link for which will be given below in the chat box uh, very soon. Apart from that, uh, we also will be sharing you the link for the events forum where you can register and know about the, all the upcoming events. Mr. Paras, am I able to get to you? Hello? Okay, let me just have a word with him over a text and uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, Okay, in meantime, uh, Mr. Paris joins. Uh, if you guys have any questions or are facing any difficulties in hearing my voice, you can post your queries or question into the comment box and I'll take up all those questions. Uh, okay, so I just uh, received a text from Mr. Paris and he's just joining. Uh, So you can start posting all your questions. So we'll be discussing Jordan tourism in detail today. And uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting webinars coming up. So the next webinar that we'll be having is uh, with Portugal tourism. And uh, Mr. Sparas Manmani will again be uh, joining us on 20th of April, the de details of which is given on our events portal. I'll be sharing the link down below in the chat section very soon. Uh, so you can visit that page and register for all the upcoming webinars. Also, I will uh, get you the download link for TrackClan app, wherein you can download the TrackClan app and uh, get all the latest information about uh, new deals, marketing material, and everything. Mr. Paras. Uh, hi, Tarun. Uh, hi, how are you? Hello, Mr. Paras. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Tarun. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, very welcome, very warm welcome to today's webinar. And a lot of people are eagerly waiting for you to start off the presentation. But before that, would you like to introduce yourself in detail and tell us about Think Strawberries, please? Uh, 
definitely so um hello everyone and i hope i or my message uh, you know finds you all in safe condition during these unprecedented times and we are all uh, getting up you know for the situation to be over so to introduce myself i am paras manwani i am the general manager of sales in think strawberries uh, looking after the entire sales team pan india and of course uh, heading some of the most uh, you know high end accounts in the company so uh, obviously jordan tourism board is one of them and think strawberries is basically a you know market representation company wherein we have uh, you know multiple tourism boards that we are representing and at the same time uh, jordan is one of them so today we will be discussing you know uh, how jordan takes you beyond your ex- imagination your expectations and uh, the overall presentation would include uh, you know all the segments uh, which is obviously leisure luxury and as well as mice so the presentation has been designed in a fashion uh, that mostly all types of uh, trade partners will be benefited um you know from from my presentation and yes i am always available and uh, as tarang rightly mentioned that uh, you know we'll be having uh, some question and answer round as well at the end so let's let's uh, proceed with the presentation tarang what do you think definitely definitely we should start off with the presentation right away you can start sharing the screen uh, and mr paras can we turn on the video as well so that people can able to see you and obviously interact with you of course okay just give me one moment because i just need to switch on the lights so that people are able to see me properly definitely just, definitely just a moment so mr paras will be starting off with the presentation very soon and uh, we'll be discussing jordan tourism in detail i've already shared the link for the events forum in the chat box and you can register for all the upcoming webinars uh, via going on to that link thank you mr paras over to you Okay, we have already started receiving questions. That's a great start. Uh, okay, so some people are uh, complaining about the volume. Okay, I'll try to speak as loudly as possible, and I'll ask Mr. Paras to do the same. Thank you so much for the feedback. Hello everyone. Uh, I hope Tarang, you can see me. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to share the screen for everybody, so okay. that we can conclude. I hope my video and my voice, everything is audible. You know, there is audio no... can be a bit loud. A few of the people were uh, talking about the same that we can increase the volume a little bit, so that uh, everyone can understand exactly what you are trying to say. Okay, let me just see. You know what's the challenge over here? Because my volume is hundred uh, percent. Uh, I might have to, you know, just consider speaking more louder as compared to my normal voice. So, uh, is it okay to everyone? Uh, we can, you know, if if uh, I see that. Yes, it's, it's okay. It's okay. So a lot of people okay. are saying That's that it's okay now, exactly. and then I think we can start off with the webinar. Sure, no problem. That's fine.
So before we start off the presentation and you set up the computer, I have a personal question for you that what do you think is the best and optimum use of this time apart from, uh, you know, learning about new destination? Obviously, that is one considering the travel trade situation as of now. What else uh, can we utilize this time for? I think, you know, there are some, we need to be very uh, specific, uh, Tarang, in terms of planning our strategies because overall, you know, as far as the tourism board is concerned, there are a lot of changes that various tourism, the various NTOs are putting in place right now. And we will have a completely different set of atmosphere going forward, you know, wherein there will be a lot of amendments, um, you know, which will take place in our industry. Uh, talking from the talking from the current agenda, you know, and to answer to your question, wherein what what should we be doing? And of course, I mean, you know, this is the time we should be utilizing in terms of getting and gathering more knowledge. I'm sure there are a lot of companies, you know, who have not focused on a particular destination. For example, you know, Jordan is something that is not very aggressively promoted. However, we have uh, showcased about 30% annual growth in terms of Indian arrivals into Jordan uh, consistently in the last three years. So okay. I think the time we should be utilizing right now is to obviously, A, is that we should be uh, investing a lot of time in terms of learning. Uh, second is that we should be also investing a lot of times in, uh, in preparing our, uh, you know, itinerary. So for example, destinations which are, uh, which are, which are, which are, actually uh, having a peak period during a winter season which is the which is the only hope right now you know this year if, if things go well we might see some uh, travel happening towards winters so i think the destinations such as middle east you know whatever comes in middle east is very popular during winters and there, there are a lot of travelers traveling to middle eastern countries like jordan uh, i would say israel then you have dubai you have abu dhabi you have so many of them at the same time i, I think i think you know uh, the short haul destinations, as we know, would, would definitely have a, a good impact once the situation is stable. For example, Maldives can pick up very well. You know, Maldives is going to be, I mean, Maldives, Dubai and all these places will be the first ones to start uh, getting tourists from India market, I believe, because these countries are firstly not badly affected. And uh, mm -hmm. so we should be utilizing our time in preparing uh, our itineraries, our plans, our packages, and we should be, you know, investing more time taking help of various suppliers. Um, of course, Travclan is a great platform for that. And you know, we should be we should be uh, investing complete time in getting all that knowledge and which can be uh, further conceptualized in terms of preparing our itineraries for winters. I mean, I understand, you know, there are there are a lot of companies who are not doing any social media promotions as such because you know to create a consumer demand is something what the social media promotions are required for. But yes, if we, if we still, you know, in, uh, on a weekly basis, start coming up, if the agents start coming up with something or the other, it would really uh, help the consumer industry also, because ultimately the travel industry is the one who will be creating that confidence level in the consumer so that consumer eventually starts traveling. So we need to prepare for all these factors, I believe. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm going to share the screen now and we will start with the presentation, right? Yes, exactly. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, it is. It's a bit blur though. Uh, let me just stop it and share it again. One moment. How does this looks like? Yes, it's, it's better. I think we can start. It's better, right? Right. So moving on with the presentation, uh, everyone, once again, thank you so much for attending the session today. So Jordan takes you beyond. Uh, this is the tagline for Jordan as a country, which means it takes you beyond your imagination because Jordan offers all types of, uh, you know, options to various types of tourists from various parts of the world. So moving on with the presentation, the first and the most important thing, it's location. Location is basically, Jordan is strategically located in, in the center of three major continents. The first one is Asia and then Europe and then Africa. 
some fast facts about uh, Jordan as a country. Uh, so the country is situated in an area of about 89,342 square kilometer with a population of about 10 million. Um, the, religion over, the religion is obviously Islamic region. The capital of Jordan is Amman, which, is, uh, uh, which, ha which has all the connectivity from major, all, majorly all the Europe, uh, Middle Eastern airlines from, uh, from their respective hubs. And in terms of the major cities, we have Amman, we have Dead Sea, we have Petra, we have Vadiram, and we have Aqaba. So Amman, uh, I will just be very crisp over here because we'll be discussing these cities in detail uh, as and when we move on with the presentation. So Amman is a cosmopolitan city wherein it gives you access to lots of uh, souks, lots of markets, lots of shopping malls. At the same time, you have some lively nightlife, and so it, it's a, it's a mix of it's a mix of history as well as uh, you know the cosmopolitan part, which is popular and for which the tourists are going to Jordan. Uh, there is lively nightlife. There are some shisha cafes which are open until late. So Amman offers uh, you know a lot of lot of hotels, a variety of hotels, starting from three stars to five stars. And at the same time, uh, you have uh, lots and lots of options from my perspective. And um, at the same time, you know, uh, in terms of in conferences, in terms of events, there are some uh, really memorable and unusual, you know, unusual venues which can be offered. So Dead Sea is completely leisure. Dead Sea is famous for its super salty water, um, which is 10 times almost saltier than the normal sea level. Uh, so yes, it's, it's very popular. There are some five-star luxury resorts, which are all, all of the five-star luxury resorts are located at the Dead Sea and facing the Dead Sea. Petra is a historic site. Uh, again, Petra is considered now to be the seventh wonder of the world. Uh, Wadi Ram is a desert, which is very famous for desert activities and some other activities, which I'll tell you. Aqaba is a coastal area, which is very famous for its coral reefs as well as water sports. Moving on to, uh, you know, why we should be suggesting Jordan to our clients. Uh, there are several factors that, you know, add a value in terms of pitching Jordan to your clients. Uh, starting with its hospitality, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great country which offers developed infrastructure. You have almost all types of five stars, four stars chains uh, located in all of these cities that we were just discussing. So you have hospitality options. You have warm welcoming people. Jordanians are really uh, peacemaking people and warm welcoming. At the same time, the hospitality is excellent. Uh, over here, the services are really good. Jordan is a year-round destination because of its moderate year-round climate. It's absolutely peaceful and safe destination to travel and very well internationally connected because, as I said, most of the, um, you know, most of the Middle Eastern airlines, they fly to Jordan from their respective hubs. And most of the Middle Eastern airlines, as we know, they are flying from tier one, tier two, and some tier three cities as well. So, you know, the connection is not a problem. We do not have a direct flight right now. There used to be a direct flight, which used to go from Delhi and Mumbai, which is the airline name is Royal Jordanian. But uh, the, it was hard luck for them because they started at the time, you know, when there was no demand uh, for Jordan from the Indian market. And as, as we speak, I would like to tell you that we do have plans to start uh, the, the direct flight as well, for which we have been reaching out to various partners, uh, you know, in, in the Indian partners as well. So considering there is a lot of demand in terms of weddings now, weddings, there are about four or five weddings happen in Jordan. There are so many mice movements happening in Jordan. So ideally, you know, it's, it's a time for uh, a direct flight to start so that it gives more access gives more feasibility or that it, it's more feasible for the travel agents to pitch a uh, destination in terms of mice as well. Um, not, to, not to forget, it's, it has developed infrastructure and Jordan definitely offers the best health and communication services throughout the region. Plus you have some diversified tourism products, which means that you have options for desert adventures. You can do water sports, you can go for shopping, you have nightlife. So let's, let's go ahead with the, with the discussion on how can you access Jordan? So obviously, you know, Jordan also shares its borders with, uh, you know, three, uh, three or four countries such as uh, Israel, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. And you can access, uh, you know, Jordan by using some of the land borders as well. And you can also um, 
access Jordan uh, by uh, by ferry if you are in Egypt. Um, okay, so you want me to, uh, uh, Tarang, you want me to answer the questions in between the presentation? So uh, this is basically a poll uh, which we have started. And okay. people can answer, right? So you can minimize that because it is, I guess it is visible in the middle of the screen. Yeah. You can minimize this question, uh, this poll section. So this is for all the attendees to answer. Mm -hmm. And you can minimize the window and continue with the presentation. Fair enough. Okay. So first, first way to access to Jordan is obviously, you know, you have uh, the main airport, which is Queen Alia International Airport that's situated in Amman. And uh, you have more than about 40 major airlines. Uh, the, the airport is at the outskirts of Amman. So it easily takes about 40 minutes from uh, main airport to reach to the main city. Uh, if you are combining your packages with Israel or Egypt, then from Israel also, you can take the King Hussein Allen by bridge, which is 57 kilometers away from Amman. Or you can take the Sheikh Hussein crossing, or you can take the Wadi Araba crossing, which is located in Agaba. So by land from Israel, you can definitely come to Jordan. And uh, you, yes, you can come to Amman or you can start your journey from Aqaba. If you are combining your package uh, with Egypt, uh, you can take the ferry service, which, which, is which is operating from a port called as Nueva in, in Egypt. And the ferry goes to Aqaba. So you can enter Jordan from Aqaba and you can also explore Jordan. So basically you can combine all these other countries as well. Uh, so you have these types of access options. Moving on to the air connectivity. So some of the most uh, prominent and the most famous airlines that are flying to Amman are these ones. Depending on your client's budget, you can use either of these airlines. They have some good connectivity options with an average layover, layover of anywhere between one hour and two and a half hours. Uh, you can, you know, uh, give any of these airlines. This is most important and I would like to give more stress on the visa because Jordan visa was earlier on arrival for Indian passport holders, but due to some lack of, uh, uh, you know, due to some illegal immigrants, uh, which Jordan as a ministry found out, uh, they had to revise their policies, which means that till uh, at this stage also Indian, Indian passport holders are eligible for visa on arrival, but the first there are several several conditions to it. So for, for people who have a resident permit or a valid visa from any of the countries like US, Canada, Australia, Japan, Sheringan countries, or UK, if they have any valid visa or any resident permit, these types of people can obtain visa on arrival by just showing the accommodation, um, hotel voucher, and return air ticket. This, the people who are not, uh, you know, meeting the previous criteria, wherein a person doesn't have any visa from these countries or any resident permit, they have to apply the visa in the local embassy and submit in the nearest VFS office. The visa processing normally takes about two to three working days. The documents required are basically all the same, which you normally, you know, use the documents in other types of visa so obviously it's the form you have the port photograph you have the passport copy then you have a confirmed hotel booking voucher six months bank statement with a signature and the original stamp of the bank this is the visa charges uh, which are mentioned below so just to tell you uh, the entire country offers a developed infrastructure which we were discussing uh, and you know it's almost possible for you for you to travel throughout jordan by using the road connectivity because it offers some intricate paved roads you know network connecting almost everywhere in jordan and as i was telling you that you know uh, jordan offers best health and telecommunication services as well in the region so the infrastructure we won't say it's developing it's a developed country and it has various types of uh, transport options as well available throughout the country. Moving on to the climate part, Jordan is a year-round destination. Let me tell you, it offers a Mediterranean climate, which is obviously ideal for uh, year-round holidays. But the best time to travel, you know, during uh, uh, to Jordan is obviously March, uh, starting from February end till about April end. After that, it, it becomes really hot, which is May, June and July but you can definitely start your travel again, effective August till about November and December as well. 
So these are the best time to travel to Jordan. It's considered to be a peak season. So uh, otherwise, we do have a lot of travel happening during January and February as well. It's it, and in fact, in May and June as well. It all depend. It all depends on when exactly the clients are willing to travel. But just to let you know, the peak season is winters for Jordan. These are some of the five star hotels in each of these cities that we discussed. So as you can see, the names yourself, you have some most prominent and the most, uh, you know, famous chains of hotels. Uh, you have some great options from Starwood Group as well. You have uh, St. Bridges, you have Intercontinental. So in terms of hospitality, you have various options and all these hotels offer you all, the, all types of facilities when it comes to mice. You know, you can host your meetings. They have several meeting rooms. You can host your conferences, conferences because they have uh, the banquet setup, which can be done. They can, they have theater setup. They have outdoor capacity. So, so this is something which is mice is something which is really picked up and is it can always be promoted in future. So, capital city of Amman is basically a unique blend of old and new, which means that you have some. Uh, historical sites along with that you have some modern architecture at the same time you have some modern shopping malls uh, as i was telling you in addition to the excellent contemporary hotels and you know whatever hotels you saw earlier and the shops and offices some of the amans unusual venues old and new make memorable meeting places which means that some of the venues such as a venue like this on the left side this venue is basically a this is called as Jerash. It's, it's a very popular venue for events uh, and a lot of concerts and a lot of events have taken place over here. Moving on to some important convention centers. So this is again from the events point of view. There are several convention centers located in Amman offering some huge capacity. So bigger, bigger group movements and bigger conventions can also take place in Amman. All the convention centers have a great theater setup capacity and a banquet setup capacity. This is, these are the numbers, the number of people which can be accommodated in these convention centers. Plus you have some main, uh, the total capacity of some meeting rooms in five-star hotels. So all the five-star hotels are fully equipped in terms of hosting the meetings as well. This is a, an attraction called as Royal Automobile Museum, which features their late King Hussein's collection of over 80 cars dating from 1909. So all these are vintage ones. This museum tour is a part of a leisure itinerary as well. But at the same time, it's very popular for motoring related launches. That means the automobile industry, uh, if anybody is uh, dealing uh, with their automobile industry clients, they can offer this uh, venue. This venue can also be given um you know for the for the travelers uh, to host their meet their their events so this museum is also able to host private events up to about 350 people so and it's an ideal venue for motoring related launches let me tell you guys This is the highest point in Old Amman. Uh, it's it's very close to Amman. This this uh, this is called a citadel. Citadel is basically again a venue for doing a gala night dinner or something like that. The catering will be done by the five star hotels. You can do a product launch, you can do a candlelight dinner over here, or you can do a cocktail reception as well. There is a very small image on the right side. It looks beautiful, you know. Once this is properly decorated by the event planners. And there are lots and lots of events that have already taken place. There are gala night dinners that have already been taken place. So you have options to, uh, you know, uh, host your events also at Citadel. This is the uh, Roman theater. So Roman theater is basically, um, it is very close to Citadel and the whole market. And this is again, uh, and very ideal and an old location for concerts and events. Uh, this venue can accommodate almost about 6,000 spectators. So if anybody uh, is, is, is connected with the music industry or any other industry, they can definitely suggest uh, or plan the event for them, for the musicians to do their concerts, launch their music albums or something like that. So this is an ideal venue as well. It's called as Roman Theatre, also open for the normal public. And very uh, it, can be, it can be easily explored while you are going to Citadel or the Old Town Market. 
Aman is cosmopolitan. Uh, as I was telling you in the beginning, the city offers its visitors plenty of lively nightlife, everything from cultural and theatrical events to Arabic entertainment, and some modern restaurants and clubs. So Aman has uh, more than about you know thirty Indian restaurants as well. So Indian food is also available. Plus you have uh, you know a lot of a um, lot of international chains, all the burgers, pizzas chain. But plus their Arabic cuisine is very popular. Uh, you have some great shisha cafes over here. You have shopping shopping options starting from old markets and souks to some modern malls. The Jordanian brands are very cheaper, plus very impressive. Let me tell you. And again, you have great hotels offering great types of services and hospitality. So, Amman is something which you should definitely include minimum of two to three nights to cover up. these are some of the pictures that we have placed uh, for indian restaurants wherein you have options of hosting a gala night dinner as well over and above indian restaurants you have all types of cuisines as mentioned in this slide at the bottom you have all types of burgers and pizzas chain as well plus the lebanese food or the arabic food is very popular these are some of them in fact as you can see on the right side this restaurant called as yellow chili this is located in a mall so in the malls also you have indian food options which is fantastic i believe Jerash basically used to be a town in itself um, you know now it's a historical monument and it's very famous for its Jerash music festival uh, it's about 40 minutes drive from north of Amman Jerash has two theaters the first one is the nor uh, north and the second one is the south the north uh, which is on the which is on the right side seats around 2000 spectators and uh, south theater has it can accommodate about 6000 spectators as i said it's jerash is again a historical place historic site this is again a venue but jerash music festival happens in jerash itself the most important spot the most important city dead sea which is a must in all the leisure and my site nearies because your clients will really love this place uh dead sea is basically 45 minutes drive now you must be wondering that you know amman also is 40 minutes from the main airport and dead sea is also 40 minutes from the airport so yes because that's how the distance is so you have option to start the your journey from either amman or you have an option to start your journey from uh, dead sea so basically um uh if you start from ideally you should be starting your journey from dead sea and ending up at amman so that you can do shopping and you can go back to the country you can come back to the country The most leading attraction at the Dead Sea is the super salty water, which is almost about ten times saltier than the sea water. Uh, of course, the magical experience is the floating experience, as you can see on the right side, the lady reading a magazine. This is how the floating takes place. The best part is because of the salt level, it is uh, virtually impossible for anybody to sink inside the de- inside the Dead Sea. If you do not know swimming, still you can jump. You will never sink inside the river because of the salty, uh, because of the salinity levels. I would say, the best part is the air around here is eight percent richer in oxygen, and uh, which really is, uh, you know, which really is pure for everybody to do the floating experiences. Plus, Dead Sea is also the lowest point on the face of the Earth, and that is exactly the reason why it's very hot during May and June. so dead so dead sea not only uh, you know is popular for its uh, super salty water but it's also popular for various types of treatments you know you have uh, some dead sea dead sea clinics which specialize in these kind of treatments as you can see so the salt is very popular for various types of skin problems as well as the mud these souvenirs are easily available in dead sea there are several shops from where you can buy these uh, these uh, the salt and the mud it's little it's little highly priced because the products are really really uh, effective i mean let me tell you that i have not seen such products in, in my life ever because they really make a change on your skin in a matter of seconds so it's also a lot of people go to dead sea to get their uh, you know usual problems cured such as uh, joint problems eye diseases you have some respiratory problems or hypertension problems so dead sea is again popular and there are a lot of uh, five star luxury chain hotels which are having a dedicated area so all these hotels uh, the five stars have are dead sea facing just to let you know and they have a dedicated area where you can do the floating experience come back and get your mud treatment and salt treatment done so this is something which is quite unique 
Dead Sea is also popular in terms of meetings. So you have various types of hotels which can be promoted and all the hotels have a proper uh, option of providing you a theater, banquet setup, meeting rooms and an outdoor capacity. Plus you have some very good chains over here. Uh, Kempinski Dead Sea hosted a wedding uh, uh, last year, just to let you know from the Indian market, which was consisted of about almost 480 people. So there have been, there are four Indian weddings that have already happened in uh, Jordan, just to let you know. Now, this is one of the uh, division of Hilton Dead Sea. It's called as Hilton King Hussein Bill Tal Talal Convention Center. It is right next to Hilton Dead Sea. This is one of the topmost and one of the biggest convention centers in the world, uh, wherein there are several types of uh, conferencing options, meetings can be hosted. Now, this is a venue for web summits. I mean, there have been a lot of web summits that have taken place. Plus, you have a great platform to host your meetings. You have a great platform to, you know, host your events. So, it's huge, let me tell you. Plus, it's, it also gives you breathtaking views of the entire Dead Sea. There have been a lot of music uh, music shows that have happened over here, some award functions. So, it is, it is highly rated and it's taken over by Hilton Dead Sea, let me tell you. As you can see on the right side, this is the link for this, Hilton King Hussein Convention Center.com. Now, this convention center offers so many meeting rooms. You have so much of capacity in theater. So many people can be accommodated in the banquet. Plus, you have outdoor capacity. So, this is absolutely an ideal venue for larger size events, conferences, or any types of uh, music shows that you are planning. This is just one of the image of a spa and a luxury resort at the Dead Sea, just to let you know. So this is the uh, this is the area where you enjoy the floating experience. Then you come back, you do the mud, you try the mud on your skin. Then you have jacuzzi as well over here. And at the same time, you have some, uh, some great breathtaking views of the entire Dead Sea. But there are several hotels. This is just one of the examples that we have highlighted uh, in our presentation. Moving on to Petra, but Petra is considered to be the seventh wonder of the world, and it's also a Jordan's most valuable treasure. Um, it, it was carved into a rock face limestone mountains almost like 2000 years ago. We are talking about 10,000 BC. Now, the image on the top is over here, as you can see, this is a Petra by night tour. Uh, this doesn't happen every day, though Petra is open to public on a daily basis during the day, but Petra by night happens on limited number of days in a particular week, which I will tell you as we move on. Uh, so the first point in Petra is obviously the treasury, um, you know, which, which, which takes about almost two hours of walk. You have carts also for senior citizens. They can use carts. It's a historic site. What you will be able to see inside Petra is that you will be able to definitely see that life existed over here. You will be able to see some sort of meeting rooms which people had prepared because the people during that particular uh, you know, era, which is almost 2000 years ago, they used to do trading over here. So you will be able to see a lot of areas and a lot of uh, natural. I mean, it's nothing man-made. It's all historic. Plus, this is a UNESCO site, so it can't be changed. Uh, so you, it's a, it's a, it's a must-visit tour. You should definitely add Petra in your itineraries. Petra is again a very popular place for mice and events. Uh, you have various types of venues over here. You have gala night dinner options. It's a hilly area, so the weather is very very pleasant throughout the year. As I was telling you, Petra by night is something which is very popular. And Petra by night is basically all about uh, the 1800 candles, which they light up in the evening with, with the Bedouin, Bedouin music. Bedouin music is the Jordanian music, basically, or you can say the Arabic music, which is the local music which is played. And the Petra by night tour starts at 8.30 and ends at 10 or 10 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So just to let you know, if you are including Petra in the itineraries, and your clients prefer to go for Petra by night, then you have to pitch for Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday because only on these three days, Petra by night tour will happen. It is open to the public, but exclusivity can also be granted because some of the event organizers and some of the mice companies in India sometimes takes, takes this area on exclusivity for holding some reception or some event in the evening or a gala night dinner. Uh, not to miss, we have a Little Petra as well. A little Petra is basically an ideal place for an evening reception, uh, which and the, the setup can be done like this with some illuminated facades, uh, which can be combined 
with the strains of arabic music to create an unforgettable atmosphere the catering will obviously be done by the five star hotel so you have catering options the food is really good indian food can be arranged as well so depending on your client's requirement little petra can also be a part of uh, a tour i mean it can be added as a tour also and you can host your gala night dinners whatever whatever your client request is from meetings point of view you have various hotels which petra has and you have options to give them uh, the meeting rooms as well so you have uh, meeting options also you have several of them you have several hotels in petra plus you have some of you have a few of the nightclubs as well in petra just to let you know but it's not exactly called as a nightlife but yes you have some nightclubs which which get over by about 1 o'clock but they do offer you a middle eastern cuisine they do offer you shisha so that's the kind of atmosphere which petra has and it's it's on the hilly area as i was telling you and it's really really beautiful moving on to adventure part we have wadi ram so wadi ram is one of the most outstanding desert landscapes now let me tell you you know there are some aerial shots that we have taken or we have uh, the drone shots it, this place actually looks like mars let me tell you the desert is so red in color at the same time these uh, you know you have a bedouin style life over here you have an option of martian tents you have hot air ballooning you have belly dancing options uh and of course not to miss the bedouin style food which means that while you are going to wadi ram the people who are preparing food for you they will uh, bury the food marinate it beneath the desert and once you are ready to eat they will just take out the food from the desert and serve you which is like amazing yeah the taste is amazing so over here you can do jeep safaris you can do hot air ballooning you can you can you have an option of uh you know desert tours either by camel or by jeep skydiving is also very popular you can do skydiving as well you can um you know enjoy this uh, stargazing also in the evening plus this these tents which i missed out sorry these are called as martian tents these this these tents offer utmost luxury now these tents have almost each each and every facility that you get at get in a in a properly a deluxe room of a five star hotel or the standard room so you have lockers you have great washrooms it's absolutely stunning and luxury of luxury tents which can be offered to your clients but wadi ram has to be included uh during the season time because it's a desert and it's hot in the off season let me tell you not only that you have lot of entertainment <clears throat> other entertainment such as you have henna painters you have fortune tellers you have belly dancers i was telling you earlier plus you have some folk dance groups which can be enjoyed you know while you are there at the wadi ram in the evening most uh, fascinating place and lively place i would say called as akaba which is very popular for its uh, nightlife i would say the shisha cafes uh, at the same time its coral reefs water sports diving options then you have it's it's considered to be one of the best diving places now akaba is located on the red sea red sea basically connects israel egypt and jordan and while you are in akaba you can easily see the opposite side which is israel uh, and you can obviously you know you don't have a proper visibility but you can see some of the monuments some of the buildings in israel and it's it's actually a stunning and a, you get a breathtaking view you have diving options you have scuba diving you have yacht experiences that can be done over here plus you have a duty free zone not to miss over here you have a duty free zone in a mall wherein the liquor is very very cheaper and that can be bought each person is allowed two bottles of liquor you can buy that as well from the duty free at the same time uh, on the next day you know you can explore the uh, the yacht experiences you can go for water sports while you're while you're done with your water sports your food is prepared by the yacht people uh, and there is a live barbecue which 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 will be arranged for you and uh, post your lunch you will come back to the hotel go in the evening enjoy the shisha cafes and then roam around during the uh, in the city some of the images of akaba this is how akaba looks like but there are several other images as well but these are some of them which we have added now this is something which is totally unique let me tell you and it's a it's an amazing experience you know i i must tell you that this really is an eye opener this is the first underwater military museum which has been recently opened in 2019 which gives you an option of deep sea diving with uh, and watching 19 fascinating relics of battles like these as you can see 
these are guided tours and these can be booked by the dmcs it offers you an environment and a marine it's it's obviously you know environment and marine life friendly and at the same time uh, this is based out of uh, akaba so you have uh, to cover up akaba i would say at least two days are required because you have so many things to do you will one day do these uh, yacht experiences you will go to the markets you will do the underwater military museum and this is a unique attraction you know it's it's something which is very very popular for adventure tour operators based out of india at the same time some of the luxury and the special interest tour of tour operators are also promoting this attraction very aggressively moving on to a place called isla this is again in akaba so isla basically is a game changing waterfront development it's it's absolutely a, a product for luxury travelers because it has some golf options as well as you can see plus you have some apartments luxury luxurious apartments at the same time you have water sports and their own yachts which can be utilized for yacht tours so isla is again an area which which can be which can be exclusively given to a tourist to stay here as well to explore everything over here itself so it's a one spot for all types of entertainment uh, let me just play a video for all of you to show you what uh, isla is all about so that you get a blend of the place <laughs> of accommodations you know obviously you have three areas so, so first one is city center wherein you have some famous hotel chains which are available which you can offer isla is another area which is which has the newly built hyatt regency this is one of the modern luxurious hotels uh, which is newly built and it gives you an access to everything that you just saw in the video uh, then you have the area called as talabe which is uh, which has two resorts one is the talabe resort and the second one is the movan pick resort movan this Talabe area is little far away from the main city. It takes about thirty-five minutes, I guess, uh, so to reach Talabe. But yes, Movan Pick Resort is very, very popular in Indian market, and a lot of travel um, travel companies, including Akaba, uh, have their contracts with Movan Pick Resort. But yes, you have various other hotels, and especially this new area, which is picking up. So this should definitely be promoted in the Indian market to the Indian consumer. Akaba is very famous for meetings as well. You have uh, amazing theater banquet capacity. Uh, so, from my point of view, also you can pitch for Akaba. Now, this is a religious site. It's a baptism site where Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist. The site name is Bethany Beyond the Jordan. Uh, the baptism site is just about twenty minutes drive from the Dead Sea resorts and about forty-five minutes from Amman city. so this also can be a part of the leisure itinerary and uh, if required in the part of my site maybe but i think it's more or more prominent in the leisure itineraries so a religious site it's not this jordan river is also uh, jordan river connects israel as well so half of the river is owned by jordan and obviously there is a site where you have israel but can be easily explored there are certain restrictions that you have to follow which the dmcs will be able to guide you this is uh, madaba which is just about 45 minutes from amman or dead sea wherever you are it's basically madaba is very famous for mosaic mosaic means paintings made up of small stones and the mosaic was basically originated in a madaba and this these paintings are exported to almost all parts of the world you have a factory in madaba which which is almost uh, which is almost about i guess 14000 square feet it's a huge factory which has these paintings you can buy and you can get them 
to your country as well. So these are really, you know, stunning, stunning ones and something which is not available everywhere in the world. Some of the pictures that I had captured uh, while I was there. So these, these are the types of paintings that they sell. These are all made up of stone, the small ones, the big ones, everything. I mean, all the, all the art and craft, which you can see over here is prepared by the small stones, which is, which is pronounced as mosaic. Moving on to Mount Nebo. So Mount Nebo, again, uh, you know, an, uh, a place or a venue, I would say, which is very popular for the pharmaceutical industry. So people who are actually connected with the pharmaceutical industry uh, really opt for Mount Nebo because as you can see, most of you will be wondering that this is a Jesus Christ symbol, but this is basically a serpentine cross, which later on became a symbol in the pharmaceutical industry. I'm sure everybody would have seen some medicines with this type of symbol. Now, Mount Nebo also overlooks the Dead Sea, Jordan River Valley. Uh, you have the hills of Jericho and the Jerusalem. So it's, it's a great venue to host the gala night as well. It is just about 10 minutes drive from Madaba. You can go to Mount Nebo as a day tour as well. You can just go there, get some pictures. And because it overlooks the Dead Sea, Jordan River Valley, so you have some breathtaking views to capture your pictures. But it's a very ideal venue for the events or gala nights as well for the pharmaceutical industry. Now, I will play some of the videos. So we have done some participation. So first one is the Fits Up Studio. So Fits Up Studios is a company in India who has been sending various uh, mid-scale celebrities. So we had sent these celebrities to Jordan on a fam trip long back uh, with Geva. And obviously, they have some great number of followers on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So this entire trip, and where, where, you know, which, which was conducted for them, gave a lot of leverage to Jordan as a destination to the Indian consumers. Then the second participation is the Red Bull participation that we have done recently. And the entire video is yet to be out, but I'll show you a glimpse of this video. Then we were recently also showcased and on regular basis, Beyond TV, which is the Indian news channel, which is picked up very well in the Indian market, also posted some a great video on Jordan as a destination. So let's just start with the Fits Up Studios. This is it. Seven days of travel, food, fitness, adventure, culture, everything. Just go with the YouTube one. Sorry, the Red Bull one. Go ahead with the Beyond TV. A city almost half as old as time harks back to a great civilization in its prime. From the Nabataeans who built Petra 2000 years back to the Ottoman Empire that crumbled in the last century, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan has borne witness to man's history. Vast, echoing and godlike, Lawrence's Wadi Room reveals its treasures at night. A canopy of diamonds in the sky. In the Dead Sea, you don't need a boat. At the lowest point on Earth, you just lie back and float. From the beach vibe at Akbar to Petra's eternal stand. From the bustling soup. 
Silbermann to Body Rooms, Martian Sands. We take our place in a long line of travelers, pilgrims and adventurers on a quest in an ancient land. Jordan, this week on We on Traveler. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, this is the end of the presentation uh, from my side. Uh, if we have any questions, I think we can start right now. Yes, I guess we, we have a lot of questions coming up from YouTube as well as on Zoom. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the questions are repeating. It is for the viewers that we'll be taking up only uh, the most relevant questions with the webinar. Uh, post this webinar, we'll be sharing the contact details of Mr. Paris with everyone so that if uh, anyone's question is remain un un unanswered, uh, you can directly connect with him as well. So sure. uh, we'll be taking up a couple of questions. Yes, uh, the questions are here in front of your screen. Uh, Mr. Paris has already started sharing. So we can start off by, uh, you know, answering one question at a time. And I can ask you questions from YouTube, which I have here in my hand. So yes. Okay, so I'm doing the open. I'm I'm read. I'm just answering one by one on these on these open questions that we have. There are perfect, twenty. Perfect. Questions. Yes. So basically, the first question is from Purva. Uh, is there any scope for mice in Jordan? Yes, I believe you know you have lots and lots of options for mice. You have op options such as nightlife. You have Indian food options. Aman is very popular. I'm sure the presentation gave you a brief insight on how you can host your meetings, conferences, and various types of venues. So mice is something which is already happening, uh, you know, from India market. And we have done a lot of bigger mice movements and we have hosted a lot of weddings as well. Uh, so I think that's the answer. Moving on to Amreen, how is Jordan doing in the kids tourism industry? Does Jordan receive a sizable number of kid travelers? Uh, well, kids are always a part of all the leisure itineraries as far as I have seen. And yes, it's a, it's a, it's, you have various types of entertainment, uh, you know, in the malls and the shopping malls. Plus there are some kids centric, um, pools and jacu uh, pools in the pools in the Dead Sea and obviously Dead Sea there are there are several locations and dedicated areas for kids to also enjoy the uh, what do you call uh, floating experiences. So overall, you know, we have we do not have any specification in terms of uh, you know whether kids will enjoy or not. But yes, kids are kids have lots and lots of options to cover up. Uh, suggested itinerary for a leisure tourism is anywhere between six to seven nights. If you want to cover everything, like that is Petra, Akaba, Wadiram, Taman, and Dead Sea. Minimum of six, seven nights. And uh, at the same time, you can go up to about 10 nights depending on your customer's budget. Uh, moving on to the next question, what is the itinerary for corporate group from Jordan and Visa Assistant? Itinerary for corporate group, uh, I believe you are asking for MICE group. So the itinerary could be one night of Dead Sea and two nights in Amman, depending if they can do four nights, then please do two nights in Dead Sea and two nights in Amman. The visa is obviously the visa procedure is on arrival for people, you know, holding valid visa from uh, various countries that I mentioned in, during my presentation, which is your uh, Shenagan countries, US, Canada, Japan, Australia, or if they have any resident permit for these countries. Apart from this, if they do not meet the criteria, then they have to obtain the visa from the Jordanian embassy and visa will be done easily. Yes, Jordan and Israel can be done together as well. As I was telling you, Jordan is easily accessible from the land borders and people meeting the criteria of having a resident permit uh, and all that can obtain visa while coming through land and entering Jordan. We need to, took, we need to take visa for Israel too to visit Jordan or may Jordan visa. No, you have to take a separate visa for Israel. There is nothing uh, interlinked with regards to Israel and Jordan visa. And Israel visa cannot be obtained on arrival at all, no matter if you have a uh, resident permit for US as well. What is the validity of multiple entry visa? I think this will have to be checked with uh, your visa counselor, but then multiple entry validity your travel history and your uh, overall, uh, yeah, your travel history basically. But normally what I have experienced and also, you know, this regulation that has just come into the picture. I mean, earlier they did not have any such possibility, but this uh, obtaining visa from the embassy of India has just started like almost a month or two months back. So these, uh, what is the validity is something that with time, you, you know, you'll be able to understand what validities people are getting for multiple entry visa. 
approximate cost for a four night itinerary what city should, should be covered so dead sea and amman is considered to be the most important spots and uh, and petra of course and if you have clients opting for adventure and coastal uh, you know water sports and aqaba approximate cost for a four night itinerary could be anywhere it depends on the star category of hotels that you choose uh, you know i mean you can easily uh, get a package of close to about 60000 70000 for a four night itinerary which includes your flight tickets as well uh, now this is something which i'm talking about a three star hotel liquor policy there is no such liquor policy you have night clubs you have liquor uh, options available it's a it's not like other middle eastern countries there are no restrictions for women as such uh, what is the seating capacity in cluster of little petra so anywhere between 200 to 250 people can be accommodated in a kala night dinner can we have stay in one city and then excursions yes you can do that you can while you are in petra you can go to wadi rum while uh, you know you can explore aqaba as well but i will suggest do not do excursions for dead sea because you will be tired you will just go any which way in dead sea you have to go in the resorts and you have to explore the experience and then only you will be able to uh, enjoy the city you know in a in a better manner but do not opt for a day tour to dead sea that's my recommendation the, the number of nights uh, in jordan which covers full jordan and in leisure is anywhere between 7 to 10 nights depending on your client's budget but if you want to cover full of jordan then seven nights is must uh this scuba diving certificate thing as such there is no guideline so it says does scuba diving certificate is compulsory to explore underwater museum no i don't think so but it's a guided tour so anyways you will be having a guide with you i mean you will not just dive yourself you will have the you will be guided by somebody you will be taken care by somebody while you are exploring the 19 relics of battle um if one wants to cover all major cities including the how many days 7 to 10 days as i said earlier uh do we need israel visa if we cross borders from aqaba to egypt and how can we do the complete process um well that's something you will have to check with the israeli embassy i'm not the right person to answer that question if you're crossing borders from aqaba to egypt you you have to take a ferry to you know from aqaba to egypt why do you need a israel visa uh you're going from jordan to egypt so you don't need an israel visa i don't think so uh elaith how how can we do it's walkable uh, same from aqaba to elaith yes you you can you can it's it's it can't be walkable i mean you have to take a speed you have to take the ferry or you have to take the road transport but yes uh, you can do that because elaith is just opposite like i said in red sea uh, you can easily see elaith uh, you know while you are in aqaba night stay you can yes you have to take a night stay in dead sea otherwise how will you enjoy the the, the surroundings but in wadi rum you can do a day trip you can do that and you can come back but if you want to stay in wadi rum then you have options of luxury tents martian tents as i was telling you earlier uh minimum package is anywhere between 60000 goes up to 80000 depending on the number of nights that you suggest now 60 70000 which is obviously for a five nighter Uh, not for a seven nighter but then average ticket the average ticket price is anywhere between 35000 goes up to 50000 45000 depending on the airlines that you choose yes uh, well this details i'll be sharing with uh, my colleagues at traplan and uh, of course you know these details are available um, with me a uh, destination specialist program was there jordan tourism board had a destination specialist program with a certification they are they are they were almost running it for almost like 10 years we had an enormous amount of participation from the trade but at the moment it is discontinued so we don't have a certification as such uh, yes uh, you have you have um, you have some religious tour options now there are some religious itineraries that can be sourced by the from the dmc so you can definitely pitch for bible tours and pilgrimage options as well but these type of tours are more prominent towards uh, israel side uh, what is the luxury tent name at wadi rum these are called as there is not one luxury tent these are actually called as martian tents m a r t i a n martian tents so there are several types of martian tents several types and several luxuries are offered so depending on the price bracket all these options can be recommended to the uh, to the uh, 
to your clients. There is one double bed in each of these 10, so two packs can be accommodated. <clears throat> Plus the third person can take an extra bed because there is a space, but not more than three people, I would suggest, because that's not what, that's not uh, how big, big that is. Uh, you need to take an international driving license and uh, you will be able to hire a self uh, drive. Uh, of course, uh, I will share my contact information and uh, with you. About 10 passes visa before arrival required and how many days can we receive the visa? So two to three working days. Uh, yeah, two to three working days is required for you to apply the visa and get the visa as well. Uh, I think this is it. So the, okay, this question has been answered live, okay. I think all the questions are covered uh, over here on Zoom. And most of the questions are taken up because almost all the same similar no, questions. I am not able to hear you now. Your voice is coming very slowly. I can't hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, all the questions are covered as of now because similar type of questions were asked on YouTube as well as on the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess all the questions are done with. Uh, if anyone has any more questions, they can post now. So some of the uh, Tarang, some of the people want my contact details. Do you think? Yes. I so uh, I will uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll be sharing this PPT. Uh, you can share this PPT with me, and I'll yes, be I sending a post sure. webinar email, right? Sure, sure, sure. And uh, with that, we'll be sending your contact information as well. No problem. I think this chat box also has some questions. You want me to answer these questions or I think those questions are repetitive because uh, I've uh, multiple times asked them to post the same questions on the Q&A bar. So no. most of the questions are covered, I guess. And no. I think it's time to conclude the presentation. No problem, Taran. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it was it was a great uh, platform. And uh, it was really, I mean, I can see that, you know, uh, this, uh, we had some great sessions, uh, some great questions from people. I, are we going to discuss the YouTube questions right now or we are? Yes, so we have a couple of questions uh, uh, from YouTube as well. So uh, uh, the first question is the, does Petra by night tour has a culinary tour as well? Uh, uh, this question is asked by Miss Reema uh, over YouTube, and we are taking some questions from YouTube uh, channel as well. So, okay. yes. So the first question is Reema. Um, uh, so Miss Reema is asking, does Petra by night has culinary tours? Yes, it can be arranged, uh, but it has okay. to be prior requested to the DMCs. Okay. Okay. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mukesh is asking, can we cover Egypt, Israel, and Jordan together? Absolutely, but you need 15 days minimum. 15 days. Okay. So, Mr. Mukesh, uh, I am sure this must have answered your question so far. And uh, what is the average cost of a skydive if someone is interested in adventure activities? It uh, has to be. So, basically, the costing is something, the attraction costing is something which is quite discreet because everybody is using a different set of supplier. But uh, average, okay. uh, if I were to tell you, then, you know, in our, in Indian rupees, it's most likely closer to about 18,000, 20,000 rupees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, again, the cost has to be checked with the suppliers. Okay. Okay. Great. And uh, some of the viewers are also asking about the liquor policy since it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an Islamic country, right? So what about the liquor policy? With there. You don't have any restrictions there. You have okay. options to buy liquor from the supermarket also. It's a very, it's a very modern. So, you know, Jordan again is a Muslim country, but it has moderate or a little bit of liberal values as well. I mean, if they are not sophisticated, they are, they are quite open. It's not okay. a strict country. I mean, they do follow a uh, lot of things, but yes, they are very, they, are, they know that, you know, they are getting tourists from various parts of the world. I mean, they have European Chinese markets as their very strong market. Plus we have Indian travelers, you know, who are, I mean, Indian travelers, definitely alcohol is something which is very popular. Uh, exactly. And it's, it's, it's something which is asked by almost each and every one. So there is no such restriction, I would say. In fact, uh, all the hotels and, you know, all the Shisha cafes, they give you liquor, which is easily available. And I think the same will be the case for uh, women clothing as well, because uh, yeah, 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 that's that's absolutely right. You do not have any restriction. I mean, obviously, the Islamic 
the the their their citizens of uh, definitely some of them prefer to wear uh, you know the the muslim attire yeah, right uh, but then you have an option i mean you it's it's not that you are supposed to be fully covered or something like that mm-hmm. okay okay uh, just one last question what according to you and i think this question will uh, conclude uh, this presentation what according to you is the usp uh, this was the same question that we witnessed in uh, Sharjah presentation as well. So, what according to you is the uh, USP for Jordan? There are many. So, Dead Sea is something which is a unique experience. Dead Sea, you know, you have floating experiences. Nobody can sink inside the river. You have so many treatments that can be done because you can you can buy so many products from there. Then you have the Middle Eastern culture. You have a Wadi Rum, which almost looks like Mars. the bedouin style food but if you were to ask me what is the most famous uh, usp then obviously i would say dead sea and petra so dead sea petra and amman these three places are must must visit when a person is traveling to jordan okay okay just one last question before we end this uh, session and so mr rajiv sabarwal is asking that post covid so basically uh, this entire standstill that we are facing as to, as an industry together is jordan yeah. thinking of travel restrictions and what steps will they take uh, to step up the hygiene facilities in hotels and attraction sorry come again your voice was breaking i'm so sorry so post this uh, covid uh, uh, situation that we all are facing as the industry Uh, is Jordan thinking of travel restrictions and what steps uh, will they take to step up the hygiene facilities uh, in hotels and attractions? Well, they are already on to it. They have uh, put the entire. Uh, they have closed all the international operations. Their airports were shut down long back. They are all almost there. They do not have many cases right now. They have, uh, you know, they have so many. Um, I would say. Uh, Uh, so basically sanitizing facilities are all there and at the same time you know you have options of uh, so once the covid is covid situation is over i think they would ease out the visa things i believe to you know ma- majorly uh, invite the tourists and give an access to the tourists i mean there have been changes i agree with the jordan on arrival visa right now but i think going forward there will be a lot of changes with regards to the on arrival visa and there is a possibility that all types of indians whether they are having a visa from schengen countries or european or sorry or us country or any other country will no longer be in picture but again these are all perceptions and assumptions right now that i'm making okay. but jordan is not badly affected their numbers are not very higher in fact they have been able to contain this virus at a very uh, strong strong stage plus they were very uh, you know preventive in terms of they took some preventive measures so i think i think jordan will pick up very well once okay. the covid situation is over okay okay yeah. okay that was a great session but before we end the session i have something for each one of us present over there so uh, traff clan is coming up with something called the traff clan ambassador program i am sure that everyone will be able to see that on the screen so uh, we are offering this opportunity to all the uh, all the members of the travel industry to become a traff clan ambassador and earn a commission and every registration of travel agent so uh, here is a chance for every travel agent and every partner across uh, india to earn up to uh, an amount of 30000 per month uh, by registering on to the traffic and ambassador program for more information i'm sharing this link into the chat box uh, you guys can uh, visit this link and register yourself uh, for the same thank you so much for uh, today's presentation mr paras it was a lovely presentation and i hope we were able to answer all the questions uh, that the viewers had uh, had in their mind and we'll be sharing off this presentation with each and every person who have registered so far and thank you so much mr paras for this lovely presentation thank you the audience for being such a kind and lovely audience and for asking all this interactive question do register for all the upcoming events in the link shared above right i'm going to share that link once again uh, for your reference so that uh, it will be much more easier for you to register so we have uh, an amazing lineup coming uh, coming in the coming weeks uh, the next event is again with mr paris and we'll be discussing portugal in detail right right mr paris yes yes absolutely i'll be having some more uh, i'll be having a great destination for everyone okay once great. again so let's uh, let's end the session for now thank you so much mr paris for joining and i hope to see you in the next session as well 
Thanks, thanks, Sarang. Thank you for organizing all this. Really appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe and bye bye. Thank you. Bye.